everybody and welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon Fritz's Routes. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Fritz chapter 2. And they both sat there, grown up yet, chilled in her heart, and it was summer. Warm, beautiful summer. When I reached the end of the fairy tale, I stopped to look down at the pages, thoughtful. I'm not sure how I feel about this one. I snapped the book shut and gazed at the cover quietly. The Snow Queen is one of Emmeline's fairy tales. She just recently received it for her birthday and allowed me to borrow it for my reading sessions. I turned my attention to the gravestones I'm sitting in front of. Though the sky is dark, the inscription of the grave is illuminated by my lantern. It's Laura's name. I hope that you and Laura enjoy the fairy tale, at least. I've only been reading at this gravesite for the last four months. Originally, I only came here to set flowers on the graves, but... Then Fritz suggested I try speaking to everyone. I was skeptical at first, but it turns out that reading helps lighten my mood when I'm here. I like to imagine Dolores and her daughter listening to the fairy tales as I read them aloud. Something soft lands on my hand, and I stop to gaze up at the sky. A single droplet makes its way down a leaf and lands on my nose. Rain? It's been a while since it's rained. Since it's rained, hasn't it? Oh my god. Are we gonna get a steamy, like, rain makeout scene? I would love that. No lie, no lie. I turned to glance at Fritz. He's been leaning against a tree for the past half hour, looking at, keeping a lookout for danger while I read. Amazing, isn't it? Even in summer, we have these rainy days. He glances up at the sky and cocks his head, a soft smile on his lips. Have I ever told you that I love the rain? No, I had no idea. I pick up both the lantern and the book and stand up. My gaze flickers briefly to the four gravestones lined up in a row. Garland, Delora, Parfait, and Mother. I've already set lilies on all four, as I do every month. Fritz always accompanies me here on these days. Oftentimes, he stands guard from somewhere nearby with a melancholy look on his face. Well, now you know. When I was a child and my father wasn't home, I used to run outside and catch raindrops on my tongue. He always scolded me for it. He said I'd catch a cold. It is hard to imagine a time when Alcaster was worried for his son. Alcaster, the previous commander of the Order of Caldera and Fritz's father, has been banished from Angeal for more than two years. No one has seen him since he disappeared. Sometimes I wonder if Fritz ever wishes to see him again, but considering everything that happened between them, I doubt their reunion would be a happy one. Uh, I turned my thoughts back to our conversation. And did you ever catch a cold? <laughs> yeah, more than a few times. I enjoyed those six days, though. My father would begrudgingly make me tea, and the two of us would talk about his adventures in the night. Those were the good days. Kiss eyes. I feel like an old man when I reminisce like this. I poke Fritz in the shoulder with a teasing smile. Because 23 is... Oh, oh my god, please don't say that. Oh! I'm not going to say my exact age, but damn. Damn, they're calling me out. Ancient in the eyes of a child. He takes my hand as another droplet lands on his, my head. The slight chill in the air gives me more reasons to sidle, sidle up to him. I press myself to his side and smile when he, he wraps an arm around my waist. He takes a lantern from me and holds it up to light our way through the forest clearing. The two of us are at the outskirts when he turns to me. Do you mind if I escort you to the palace to meet up with you later, princess? What did you just call me? Sorry, the title just comes so naturally. Anyway, would that be alright with you, Lucette? And where will you be going? I need to do some cleaning at the manor. Then after that, I need to gather a few materials for Jurian. I glance up at the sky again. I am able to see it more clearly through the canopies now. It looks cloudier, darker, cloudier, darker. The rain is picked up. My family has dinner with some esteemed guests tonight. If I run that errand with Fritz, there's a possibility I will come and rain shut late. Though my presence is not required, it might be better for me to be there. I pause to consider the warmth of Fritz at my side and falter. But being beside him like this is nice, especially because he's been so busy lately. We're gonna go with our boy Fritz to the manor, let's go! It's not as if I need to be at the dinner tonight, and I haven't been able to spend much time with Fritz, so this is fine. Oh, you're not busy today? Not any busier than normal. It's not as if I will be gone the rest of the night, and besides, I lean in closer. It's remarkable how warm he is, even now. 
I'd much rather spend time with you while you're still here. You have a tendency to disappear when I'm not watching you. Oh? If I take my eyes off you for too long, you vanish into thin air. He laughs. Every good knight knows how to be inconspicuous. Besides, he drums his fingers gently against my hip and raises an eyebrow. Sometimes you see more interesting things cloaked in the shadow. Oh my god, Fritz. Make it sound as if you're spying on people. I don't spy on people, he said. I'm just observant. That's true. Fritz is incredibly perceptive. He knows more about me than anyone else. The image of you hiding in the shadows is rather ominous. Not at all alluring. Oh my god. <laughs> Fritz, watch me bathe anytime, baby. Let's go. He pauses to face me. His eyes so golden against his dark skin seem to shine beneath the shades of the canopy. Neither of us speaks. Fritz brings his thumb to the bottom of my lip and slowly runs his thumb across it. Lots of things happen in the shadows. Part of the allure is that whatever happens is a secret. Don't you think? Fritz looks at me for a long moment, then he grins. <laughs> he never ceased to amuse me. Amuse you? He backs away from me and holds out a hand. I take it, allowing him to pull me from the last of the trees into the town square. I am not amusing. You wear your emotions on your sleeve, princess. <laughs> it's precious. I simply prefer honesty. I still have difficulty opening up to people, and would rather not show weakness in front of anyone, but... I've gotten better. Fritz? Yes, is that? You are honest with me too, right? Of course. His slow answer gives me a pause, but I say nothing. Fritz's eyes are already on our surroundings, watching everything and everyone around us warily. The rain has begun to pick up, so I hold the book closer to my chest as we make our way towards his manor. We only stopped to pick up food. Ooh, I wonder what they got. Share with me, sis. The streets grow colder as we walk. A bitter chill hangs in the air and I draw closer to Fritz without thinking. He wordlessly drapes an arm over my shoulder and holds the lantern closer. He glances up at the sky, a fond smile on his lips. Fritz is warm as sunshine, and yet he really does love cold rainy days, doesn't he? The two of us make our way back to his manor in peaceful silence. Inside, Fritz takes everything I have and sets it down on the table. He lays out a meal for the two of us and then takes a seat at the table beside me. The meal is thankfully simple, nothing but variety, variety of small sandwiches. The simplicity is nice for a change, after so many extravagant meals at the palace. So what sort of cleaning do you need to do? There's some items in my room I need to gather and return to the order. Then I need to organize some documents for Jurian. And when that is all done, what will you do? Fritz stares at me blankly. The look takes me by surprise. Will you have any other obligations to the Order? Oh. He smiles a little sheepishly. There might be a few things, but I should be done by the end of the week. The room quiets as we focus on the meal. I'm not bothered by the silence. I've always found these moments of quiet relaxing, especially in Fritz's company. The silence persists until Fritz gets to his feet and smiles down at me. How about some warm tea for the cold weather? That would be nice. Thank you. Alright, give me a few minutes then. He's on his way to the kitchen when he stops and glances over his shoulder. Feel free to make yourself at home. He disappears into the kitchen, leaving me by myself. When he's gone, I'm aware of how absolutely still the manor is. The only sounds I hear are coming from outside. I make my way to the window and stare outside, baffled. It's pouring, the streets are mostly empty, filled with nothing but deep puddles. No wonder it's so quiet. I turn away from the window and begin to wander around the living room. Not much has changed since I first came here two years ago. The house is still impersonal, even when it belongs only to Fritz. At least, that's what I think. But as I'm looking around, I come across a small framed illustration that doesn't look familiar to me. Oh my god, his mom is so cute! It's a small portrait, but the woman featured in it makes me pause. Her hair is white as clouds, her eyes a soft brown. Her smile is gentle and reminds me of... Fritz? I pick up the framed portrait up and flip it over. There are words written on the back in a cursive slant. I read them out loud. To my wife, you are the sun and I the world. 
I hope that I can continue to bask in your warmth for the rest of my days. The signature beneath takes me by surprise. Alcaster? I face the kitchen, my heart beating erratically in my chest as I set the portrait down. I'm even more surprised when I notice Fritz standing behind me, holding a simple tray with a single teacup on it. His eyes straight at the floor, and I follow his gaze to see another teacup, turned over and broken. Are you okay? Fritz lets out a nervous laugh. <laughs> I'm finally sad. Uh, it was just a clumsy misstep. He sets the tray down on the table, walks off, and returns with materials to clean up the shattered cup and spilled tea. When he's done, Fritz gestures absently at the remaining teacup. Though he's smiling at me, his gaze seems far away. He looks shaken. I take the cup of tea from him with some worry. Sorry about that. You can have that cup and I'll go make myself another. I cradle the tea in my hands and gingerly take a sip. The tea is warm and soothing and helps relieve some of the tension in my body. What do you think? We're going to offer him the cup of tea. Because Homeboy needs it. He is obviously stressed and he needs a bubble bath. You don't like it? No, it's perfect, but... I think you need it more than I do. I finally said, I just accidentally tripped the tray, tipped the tray, and sit down and drink Fritz. Fritz's shoulders sag as he falls down into a chair at the table and takes a teacup from my hand. After some moments' hesitation, he begins to drink. Two years ago, when I was stressed, Delora treated me to a mug of hot chocolate because it helped calm my nerves. Tea has a similar effect. Better? Fritz lowers the teacup and smiles apologetically. I'm sorry. No apologies are necessary, Fritz, but you obviously have something on your mind. Have I really become so easy to read? I can tell the difference between your clumsiness and your distress. I place my hand over his, and for a few moments, Fritz allows me to see past his usual facade. I'm aware of the sadness in his eyes. When he doesn't speak, I move my hand away with a sigh. I get glance back at the portrait that I picked up earlier. To my knowledge, the portrait has never been displayed in this room. That wasn't here before, was it? No, I just recently put it out. I found it in my father's room and decided to display it in here. Fritz's eyes the portrait with a sorrowful sorrow so profound it makes my heart ache. I don't really remember my mother's face, but... I knew that was her the moment I saw her face. I'm sorry I acted so strangely when you picked it up. My mind went blank. When you read those words aloud, it's been a while since I've read them. For a few moments, Fritz's eyes are far away. One of his hands forms a fist as he looks sullenly down at the table. When you said my father's name, he sighs. It's hard sometimes, remembering my father as someone who could actually love. His words on the back of the portrait remind me of the man he used to be. Fritz and his father never seemed to get along. I never knew how terrible their relationship was until I learned that Alicaster was the one to curse Fritz. He may not have been the one to cast the magic, but he was the one that gave the command, and that's worse. I always doubted Alicaster loved Fritz. How could he, when he was the one to curse him? Fritz leans back in his chair, a defeated expression on his face. You know... Sometimes I think I've become exactly like him. Like my father, I mean. I stare at him uncomprehending. What? Fritz, you're nothing like Alcaster. Are you sure? I used to believe that all knights were righteous and that the citizens of Angeal were flawless and kind hearted. My father told me that was a naive notion, and I always judged him for being so critical of people. I strove to prove him wrong. And now? Now, I think I understand what he me meant when he said that people abuse kindness. Fritz's expression is as dark and gloomy as the weather outside. People are always looking for someone to hate. They hide it behind smiles and pleasantries, but in the shadows, they plot and scheme behind the hardship, blame their hardships on others. He looks up at me, and I can tell that he's referring to the witches who kidnapped me three days ago. Witches, fairies, humans... They're all the same. They're all conniving in their own way, no matter who or what they are. He sounds like mother. You give them some power, and they abuse it. You show them kindness, and they walk all over you. 
People only bow their heads to those they fear. He breaks off suddenly. His hands are shaking, but whether from rage or shock, I can't tell. Abruptly, he looks away. You see, it sounds exactly like something my father would say. Something his father would say, and something Varg would have said. Has Fritz really felt that way all this time? I don't know what happened to Alcaster to make him so bitter. I don't know what happened to make him despise all those around him. But I do know about Fritz's circumstances. I know he's been pressured for a very, very long time. I know that he's given far more than he's ever received. And I know that sometimes he forces a smile on his face to hide his true feelings. I used to think Fritz was relentlessly optimistic, but the last two years have changed him. I walk over to him. He's sitting down at the table when I wrap my arms around his neck from behind. I don't want to be like him. His voice is just a whisper. You're not like him. Your father allowed hatred to consume his life, but you battled compulsion relentlessly. He was pessimistic about everything, but you hide your negative feelings away in hope that you can overcome them. You're strong, Fritz. Strong enough to shoulder your own burdens and to still carry mine on your back as well. You're the strongest person I know. I plan to kiss on the top of his head. Every time you feel like this, please come talk to me. I tell you about my concerns, and I want you to be able to speak to me too. I pull away so that I can face him. Let me help you the same way you've helped me. Fritz looks up. Our eyes connect. The smile on his face doesn't reach his eyes. Oh, poor baby. He needs, he needs a love. He needs, like, so many hugs and head pats because... He is carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders, and he deserves better. Some nine shining armor I am. I can't even remain optimistic for my princess. Oh, and I was under the impression that you're no longer knight. His expression falls even further at that, and I immediately regret my words. I know that there's more in Fritz's mind than he is telling me. I know, however, that he will not share any of it. Fritz always shuts down when he thinks he's inconveniencing me. The atmosphere in the room is heavy, and the rain doesn't help the mood any. It's impossible to cheer Fritz up in such a dismal place. I look up and focus on the rain drumming on the window pane. At first, my mind is blank, filled with nothing but the soft sounds of the rain. Then suddenly, an idea occurs to me. I stand and flash a smile at Fritz. I'm going outside. Wait, Lucette! I step outside before he can stop me. The moment I step outside, the rain cools my skin. It's coming down so heavily my dress is soaked in mere minutes. Lucette, what are you doing? Fritz stands in the doorway, staring at me owlishly. He looks equal parts confused and amazed. I turn and laugh. What is it, old man? Are you afraid that you'll get wet if you follow me out here? Oh. Yes. Yes. Get it, sis. Fritz is gra gaping at me. He looks like a fish out of water, which makes me laugh even harder. I prefer this look to the frown he was wearing earlier. Now, if only I could get him to smile. Uh, of course not, but Lucette, you're going to get soaked. I think it's a little too late for that, Fritz. <laughs> I turn and begin to walk away. Fritz chases after me. There's no one out in this rain. I don't have to worry about being approached. I break into a run. I have no idea how far I can get before Fritz closes the distance between us, but I feel that I need to get away from, get him away from that house. Inside, he becomes trapped with memories of people who are lost to him. He allows sadness to consume him. Lucette, where are you going? I duck into an opening between the trees. My footsteps do not shatter the quiet reverie of the forest. In fact, the forest feels even more peaceful beneath the steady downpour. It's not long before I hear Fritz behind me. I have only just stuck beneath the branches of a looming tree when I feel his hand on my back. I turn and am shocked when I see the crooked grin on his face. I find myself backing into a tree before I can help it. Fritz draws closer and closer until that grin is mere inches away from my face. Well, well. He's close enough that I can feel his breath on my cheeks. I shudder and am not entirely sure if it's because of the rain or Fritz's expression. Looks like you've been caught, Miss Runaway. His smirk is short-lived. It soon fades into a frown so cold it makes my heart sink. What will you do now? 
how do you plan on escaping? I can see something in Fritz's eyes, something I've never seen before. A challenge. I try throwing myself against him, but Fritz quickly stops my movement by pressing himself closer to me. I gasp, suddenly aware of the warmth of his body. Even beneath the soaked clothes, he radiates a lulling heat. I look up at him with determination, but fall to where I notice the emptiness in his eyes. Rain trails down his skin, making it look as if there are tears coursing down his cheeks. Fritz? He sets his head on my shoulder. He's so close I can feel his heartbeat rever reverberating through my body. Set, I can't lose you. Fritz? Slowly, his fingers fall away from my wrist. He raises his head slightly, but his voice is nothing but a whisper. If someone trapped you like this in an alley, if you weren't able to take out the dagger in time, if you were kidnapped and I wasn't with you... He takes a deep, shaky breath. If anything ever happened to you, I would never forgive myself. I cannot help but recall what Fritz said about the dagger he gave me. He told me that it was his mother's, that the day she died, she didn't take it with her. Was his mother killed? I think back to Fritz's anxiety, to the faraway look in his eyes when he discussed his father and mother. I don't understand, not completely, but... I put my hands on Fritz's chest and slowly, gently push him away so that I can look into his eyes. You'll never lose me. I held his gaze with confidence. My friends died so that I could continue to hope for a better world. Those of us who survived have the obligation to keep that dream alive. I believe in you, Fritz, so please believe in me. Fritz breathes out softly. Once again, I feel the warmth of his breath on my cheeks. I continue to look at him, waiting. Finally, the silence breaks, and he smiles at me softly. It's a small and fragile smile, but the honesty in it is relieving. You really are something else to set. He pulls a strand of wet hair from my face and cups my face in his hands. Yes, I trust you. He bridges the gap between us in a heartbeat. Oh my god. This is so steamy. Oh my gosh. My lips meet, and despite the bitter cold of the air around me, I'm suddenly warm. I don't protest when he slides his hand down the length of my back into my waist. Our kiss, which starts small and hesitant, eventually grows deeper, bolder. The feeling of the rain on my skin fades completely as I focus on the sensation of his lips against my own. On the comforting and stable press of his body. When Fritz finally pulls away from me, his mischievous smell is enough to send a shudder of anticipation coursing through me. Strange. I could have sworn you weren't a witch anymore, and yet I have the distinct feeling you put me under a spell. He twines his fingers through mine with a smile. Have you had enough of this rain? So long as you're feeling better? Yes. After that, who would- <laughs> Fair, oh my gosh, please. This is a family game. I nudge him in the shoulder, but he just laughs merrily. Let's return before you catch a cold. The two of us make our way back through the forest and towards his home. Once we are back inside, Fritz releases my hand and shakes his head, scattering raindrops over the floor. Despite our best efforts to dry ourselves, we both still make puddles on the floor. Fritz claps a hand on my shoulder. His touch, even through the fabric of my clothes, sends electricity coursing through my body. I can prepare a bath for you, princess. That should warm you up. Oh, sorry. I mean, Lucette. I would prefer you keep me warm instead. Girl! Oh my... Okay, okay. The words are slippery and are out of my mouth before I can regret them. Fritz stares at me, looking equal parts flustered and shocked. Then slowly, his lips begin to curl into a smile. Is that an order? Yes. Well then, as you command, your highness. He sighs behind me and plants a kiss on the nape of my neck. Then, before I can react, he picks me up and walks toward his bedroom with a cocky smile on his face. It's actually a lot more convenient. I was wondering where I was going to find you a change of clothes, but now it looks like I needn't worry. 
He pushes the door of his bedroom open with his foot and walks me inside into a quiet and gentle darkness punctu punctuated only by a soft battle of rain against the windows. The two of us spend some time in each other's company, laying close enough together to stay warm in the cold and silent home. By the time I return to the palace, the cold has abated. I am filled with a lingering and hopeful warmth. Okay, Miss Lisa, I get it. It's been three days since the intense rainfall. Three days since I near, very nearly spent the night in Fritz's home. I would have probably slept the night away if his arm in his arms, if not for the fact that I suspected the palace guard would come looking for me if I did not return. Fritz and I walked back to the palace, the first opportunity we got, but that didn't stop my family from worrying. Ever since that day, Fritz has been sleeping in his room at the palace, whether to be closer to me or to avoid going back to his home. I'm not sure. Perhaps it's both. Fritz leans against my desk with a smile, calm and collected as usual. I don't have much time before I have to meet with the king, but you called me here because you had a special request, right? What can I do for you? I sit up a little straight on my bed, hoping that my gaze holds nothing but resolve. I want Fritz to take my next word seriously. I've been thinking about this ever since he gave me the dagger. Fritz, I would like for you to teach me something. Teach you something? We need to learn how to defend ourselves. Defend yourself? Oh. Understanding lights his face when I reach into my drawer and pull out the knife he gave me. I mentioned this before, but carrying around this knife is useless if I don't know how to use it. It's not just about using the knife, though. I want to learn to protect myself, even without the weapons. I think back to the moment Fritz captured me in the forest. He told me to free myself, and I was unable to do so. Even had I wanted to, I would have been unable to reach for the knife. I'd rather you didn't have to use the knife at all. And if I have to... I know how protective Fritz is. I know he doesn't want to hurt me or watch me be hurt, and that's why I believe he will give in to this request. Even something simple will help. I don't want to be a burden, Fritz. Not to you and not to myself. I may no longer have magic, but that doesn't mean I'm incompetent. Finally, Fritz relents. His sullen gaze slips into a smile. I love your confidence, he said. It's inspiring. I will do anything to protect it. To protect you. So yes, I'll teach you the basics of defense. I only hope you'll never have to be in another situation where you have to use the techniques. Thank you, Fritz. You never need to thank me, Lucette. We'll do our practices in the forest. There you can learn both evasion and defense. He stands up. When he raises his eyebrows, I can see familiar confidence. A challenge sparkly in his eyes. He steps forward and plants a quick kiss to my lips. I'm looking forward to seeing you triumph. I will triumph, I promise. I believe it. Fritz offers me one last smile before excusing himself to run the day's errands. Alright, and that is episode two. I will see you all next time for episode three. Thank you, or chapter three, I should say. <laughs> Thank you all so much, and I'll see you later. Bye.